We've completed our valve adjustment. Now we're going to install the intake manifold. The intake manifold gaskets consist of four pieces. You have two long gaskets, such as this, which will be applied directly to the intake face of the head. You'll also have two other gaskets, one that seals the intake manifold to the back surface of the block, and one that seals the manifold to the front surface of the block. There are generally two types of these gaskets. One of the two types of gaskets used in this area is the cork impregnated neoprene gasket. The other type commonly used is an all rubber gasket. Both these gaskets can give you an extreme amount of trouble during assembly because they're going to want to try and squeeze either out of the block or into the block causing a leak or after the engine has been assembled for several months they tend to crack and split once again moving out from the block and causing an oil leak. Therefore most gasket manufacturers more and more are starting to supply silicone sealer. We've applied approximately a 3 16th diameter bead of the silicone sealer from one end of the block surface to the other and brought it up on the edge of the cylinder head slightly. We've also applied a thinner bead around the, the water passage at both ends of the cylinder head. Now we can take our side gasket and lining it up with all your ports and your bolt holes, press it into place making sure that we laid the gasket over the silicone in the corner. Once we've installed both side gaskets, we want to come back to these corners and reapply a small amount of sealer to continue the bead up on the tang of the side gasket and also around the other face of the water passage. Our gaskets are now in place. We're going to take our intake manifold and gradually lower it into place trying to look through the bolt holes through to the head to aid in our proper aligning the manifold. We just rock it very gently to seat it down on the silicone on both ends. Once of the bolts, once you've started all your intake manifold bolts, you want to take your wrench and just snug all of your bolts. You want to do this starting from the center of one side move to the center of the other side, moving out and across, out and across. What we're trying to establish here is a pattern that goes around the manifold and works from the center out. This way we won't warp the manifold and we will tighten our bolts correctly. On a lot of intake manifolds, it's almost impossible to get a direct line with a socket to the manifold bolts. In our case we could get away with using a torque wrench on these center bolts. Other manifolds the only thing you can contact these bolts with properly is a box wrench. Let's consider that our intake manifold is one that we have no access for a torque wrench. What we want to do with this type of manifold is by using a box wrench continue our tightening pattern a little bit at a time. Once again starting in the center, working our way out and around. We want to do this until we have fairly adequate tension on these bolts. At this time we can take a torque wrench and by tightening a bolt that's easily accessible, however, do not use one of the extreme end bolts or you may damage your intake manifold. You want to tighten one of these bolts to full torque spec, which on this engine is 30 pounds. At that point, you can take your box wrench and just try and tighten it a little bit more. That'll give you a feeling of what 30 pounds is like with the wrench that you've chosen to tighten your manifold with. Now you should loosen this nut, this bolt back up to where it was before you applied your torque wrench and continue tightening your intake manifold in the same sequence 
using the feel of the wrench you had, tightening the bolt when it was a full torque. Now you can make sure that you've not only evenly tightened your intake manifold, but gotten it very close to manufacturer specification. Mine, you must align the slot in the balancer with the key of the crankshaft. Now we want to take our palm and pat the balancer onto the crankshaft to the point where it sticks. At this point the balancer is actually stuck to the front of the crankshaft and is starting its proper alignment on the shaft. Now I'm going to use a block of steel that has a smooth, straight, flat face on it. This face I'm going to hold firmly against the front of the balancer on the center hub in line with the center of the balancer. If you notice this ch the change in the sound, we are now firmly seated in position. If your crankshaft was so equipped with a threaded hole, we can now reinstall our retaining bolt, tighten it to the proof spec, with a torque wrench and use this bolt once again to rotate our crankshaft for us so we can align ourselves to top dead center using the alignment notch in the outer ring of the balancer and our timing tab on our front cover. If you have an earlier crankshaft which does not have this provision, by inserting two pulley bolts back in the balancer, now what we want to do is find top dead center number one piston. To do that, we'll come back over to number one cylinder, which is in the left front of the engine. Valves are already adjusted. We will get our regular four stroke sequence and we will fill our compression stroke if we place our finger in number one plug hole. We continue turning until we feel pressure building up under our finger. That sound you just heard of hissing air is the air being displaced by the piston and pushing out between my finger and the head. We are now on the compression stroke of number one. We can remove our finger now and continue rotating the crankshaft until our two reference points, being that of the notch in the balancer and top dead center, which is zero on our timing tab, are in alignment. At this point, we've arrived at top dead center number one cylinder. This will aid us in installing our fuel pump rod and fuel pump and in indexing our distributor for proper startup. By, By taking, taking a long, a, a one inch or longer 3A 16th bolt and threading it into this hole, we will later note that it will serve us by holding the fuel pump rod in its top position. Taking the end that you've coated the, half the length with grease, insert that end up into the passage and push it up as far as it'll go. If this engine were in its installed position in the car, this rod at this time would try to slide back out. However, by having this bolt in place, by just turning it in with your fingers, it will eventually contact the fuel pump rod and hold it in position. You'll find this a great asset if ever change the fuel pump in the car. Apply grease to both sides of fuel pump plate gasket. And we'll put our fuel pump mounting plate in place. There are two small quarter 20 bolts that retain the plate to the engine block when the fuel pump is not in place. Just start these two bolts in place. Now, to keep everything in proper alignment, take your two fuel pump bolts and just start them by hand in a few threads. By moving the plate around till we have equal clearance between the plate and the bolts that hold the fuel pump, 
We can now tighten the two attaching bolts. Snugly. And then just a little more similar to how we tighten our oil pan. At this time we go back to our grease can and apply a film of grease. Let's coat the other side of the gasket with some grease. By starting with a pump at a slight downward angle, we cam it into the hole and then bring it straight in. At this point, I've actually contacted the fuel pump rod, but I still have about a quarter of an inch gap between the pump and the mounting plate. Now we can take our wrench, and by alternately drawing these bolts in, We'll pull the fuel pump in with them, keeping proper alignment to the fuel pump rod and the block, and compress the spring in the pump until the pump is seated snugly against the block. At this point, these bolts can be brought up to approximately 25 pounds, which is just a little bit less than what we tighten our intake manifold to. Now we've successfully installed our fuel pump with the least amount of effort. Do not forget to remove this bolt that we used to hold the pump rod in place.